I think the old me would say like like build it up. See what I'm saying? I I still love my 0.1s or my 0.10s or 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 not 0.10 but 0.05s and like kind of building up to a 0.10 so then that way I can compound my account versus just off the gate just hopping into a 0.10 and like you know you dealing with slippers off of your first entry and now you losing two three thousand dollars versus like taking 200 500 a thousand and building it up you know what I mean getting the momentum going I mean if you really just wanted to keep yourself super humble you can just write down a list of all the yeah. bills you have yeah. And if you pay one of them, stop. Walk away. Just, <laughs> Just walk away, take right? One trade, pay a bill, walk away. <laughs> that, but, but again, like you would hot like if you see good entries, especially if you know like and 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 I get it. I be wanting to like just keep building on um more shots. Going back yeah. to how we talked about like getting shots up like like I I feel like, you know, if you're not missing you know what I mean? Like, keep shooting. You know what I mean? Like, if yeah. I go 15 trades in a row, you know what I mean, where I, like, legit, like, caught great entries, I want to keep trading. See what I'm saying? My yeah. problem is I, I start seeing, like, okay, my account my account is building, and I start over-leveraging my lot size. See what I'm saying? So then... So, so do you have, like, a written goal per day? Like, like for me, I'm looking for... If I get two, three hundred a day, I'm good. Because I've been, I, I've been, I know yes. I got other stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, so my new rule, like, literally when I fund up, is $500 a day. See what I'm saying? Because I feel like that is easy attainable, especially with um, the lot sizes that I've been hopping into. You know what I mean? And so... Now, what I would yeah. say is um, when, you, when you're getting that consistency, mm -hmm. do something... So are you currently making 500 a day? No. Okay, What? so what is... What I'm saying is make... Get a comfortable goal first. A something that you know... Goal. Get get some that you know you can do in a day, and you say, okay, if I take a hundred trades, mm -hmm. and I this this hundred trades aligns with my setup, aligns with everything that I know. Mm -hmm. well, all I need to do is just size up on these trades. I can still take the same hundred trades, but I'm making more because mm -hmm. I put more in. But what if, you, what if you can't really? What if you couldn't really tell really? Because for me, I was only hopping into zero point ones first. And mm -hmm. two, I, I never used to hop into US 30 and got get that type of payout. You know what I mean? So for me, it's more about like actually being more consistent with the actual pair that I'm using versus mm -hmm. before I was just hopping into small lot sizes and still was hopping in more entries, but they were just like $8, $9, 50, you know what I mean? Like that's not substantial amount of yeah. money. And and that's where the statistics come in. What mm -hmm. you look at your statistics and uh me and me and Ben, we use um trading view, uh, I mean not trading view, trader sync for our um for our journal, trading journal. Get mm -hmm. a trading mm -hmm. journal where you can separate out, hey, this is these are what I'm looking for for a substantial win. What right. characteristics are characteristics of a substantial win? Not just a good entry but something that meets all the criteria that is like, okay, if I take 10 of these trades, uh, seven of them are going to be winners. Right. Or, you know, you know, it's, it's more of a numbers thing at that point. Real quick, H, can you share your screen and show trading sync or maybe drop the link in the room chat? I, I don't yeah. know if I told Bruce to this as long as I've known you to look at trading sync, but this is. Um, <laughs> I know I got, they have a free trial too. It's uh, I uh, haven't heard of trading sync. Yeah. yeah, my bad. My bad. I should have told you a long time ago about it. I forgot about it. Like, hey, should I use it? This is fire. I, I never heard of it. Wow. Yeah, it is. It is really fire, and I should be using it. <laughs> yeah. I stopped. Mm. I stopped. Like, wait a minute. Excuses. Um, does the say. Trader Sync, excuses. we have the um. What's the link that that you gave me? Trader Sync. You sent me a, You sent me a link, man. Trader Sync. S Y N C. <sighs> Okay. Oh, let me check. Actually, actually, let here. me see if I got it over here. Y'all got it in your man, YouTube. Man, like, description? I don't appreciate this. This is this is exciting for me. Like I ain't gonna lie. I dropped some real gems today. Hey, that's it. Them guys are the ones dropping gems. I'm just here, just talking and being a guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and start burning some gems in a second though. I really am gonna go off on a rant about these uh, indicators. 
Oh yeah. Oh, you might as well go and get started. I'll find I'll find whatever we got um on Trader Sync real quick. I just need to go in my history here. I just say before I start my rant though, Fresh, what do you think about all this? You you're more of the um when you do you when you trade, you're not really a scalper, right? You're more of a swing trader and staking type of crypto I, deals. I'm, I'm like a long term guy. I I look at things for long term. I don't do shit. I did forex a little bit and I lost a shit ton of money. Oh and snap. So I like and to be honest, I wasn't like uh, I didn't know anything when I was doing it. I was trying to figure it out, lost all kinds of money and then just Bro, said, that is exactly what happened on options with me. Ex I was like, man, there's money to be made and I got in there and got my shoes took. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> It was ramen for two years. Hey, I dropped that link uh, to the Trader Trader Sync. Uh, they do do a free trial. So Trader Sync, what it is, it's a um, it's an AI based trading journal. Yeah, so it I actually see. learns as you as you uh, enter. Um, what broker do you y'all use? So so again, I use and and this is something too that I think I want to change. Like I I think that again, like uh, well, mine's is KOT and and uh, Hugo's way, but I let everybody go, and then I want to kind of follow up with something. I use Fidelity. Fidelity. Let me. I'm. I'm checking the brokers that they have real quick. I know they got TD Ameritrade. I know they got Charles Schwab. Uh, manual. Yeah, I use Fidelity for now. I use uh, TD Ameritrade. Think of Swim for the longest time for stocks, and then for cryptos, I use Coinbase as my off and on ramping to do so. Uh, do pretty much like day trading scalps on, but I do all my staking on the nodes, like directly with like Cosmos ecosystem, I direct, directly stake in the Kepler, the Kepler wallet directly to the nodes and uh, all the other crazy staking positions. But then we got a whole nother, see, we've been talking about techno, uh, technical analysis and trading and stuff today, but that's not all we're about here at BLA Dow. Mm -hmm. We also like to make money off of play to earn games. With Web3 oh, yeah, yeah. Gaming. Fresh. What's your well, favorite play to earn game really, right now? We'll do it for um, another episode. I just want to go around the room. Like my favorite <clears throat> game right now, play to earn. Yeah. Uh probably EVIO or gods. Um just because like with EV it's easy. You go in, you you can earn if you're good, or well, you can earn if you're not, but it just takes longer. And uh Gods is consistent. Oh yeah, guys. What about they, you, H? Gods. Guys, it's got to be guys. I, bro, I play guys almost every day. I play a couple of games. Even the thing is with gods, it's like, it's it's like it's if you participate, you win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like I'm okay with that, and I win. You know, I blow people out sometimes, but I'm like. You know, I'm not. Wait, I missed it. What are we talking about? I missed it. I had a phone call. What? what so what, we're what talking you guys about play? um play to earn Web three game Gods Unchained. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, okay, I'm, I, I'm on. Now, why I brought it up? H Fresh said it's one of his favorite. H said it's one of his favorite rooster. I know you're gonna say Gods is one of your favorite in the play to earn God. space. Yeah. God is Reason why. I, go to. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why I brought it up though is because the NFT marketplace for the cards in God's Unchained Token Trove has H. Are you sharing your screen? You can just pull this up. Has charts hold with on, let me, hold on, let me uh, pull it up here. Here, yeah, it has charts with the volume and time periods for the actual NFTs. So, the same technical analysis that I've used on penny stocks and cryptos. Just click on any of them to show the chart. So this is a personal card that me and Ben and all and uh, Rooster were looking at. It's uh, Frost, the Frost Queen Nefru. It's seventy bucks right now. I bought it at forty eight bucks. So me it's too. Up thirty dollars from where I, I bought two of them. So that's sixty bucks, real quick. Sixty bucks. The top level for this. Let me go, Frost Queen. Look at the yeah, top. Click on card, that. Yeah, but click on it and show the chart. Oh yeah, the chart. So no, not that you one. You want to go this to the media right one. Works. Yeah, this there one you got go. more sales there. You can see the all-time chart. You can see the seven-day chart. And you can see mm -hmm. the monthly chart. How the card actually does in sales. And so That's I'm just waiting for it to get over 100 for real. 
They had the same technical analysis mm -hmm. that I use on stocks and everything I use on these NFTs too. Because that's why I say these patterns and everything, these candlesticks, and even though it's not a candlestick, it's a line chart, but still it, they go the same direction. That's it. That's yep. the that's that's the whole bread and butter right there. Like yep, my so in my opinion, you right had all the extra the stuff NFTs right here. And that's yeah, funny because I think like when y'all talk about I heard Fresh say, like, you know, you know, you guys kind of look at the project, or I don't know if that was Fresh or Rooster who said like they look at the project. That was me. You know, oh yeah, or or H my bad. Um, like looking at the the actual project and then investing, like me, like when I got into global exchange, we were just an exchange. So we just looked at any crypto who wanted to be a part of an exchange and we just looked at their technical analysis. You know what I mean? I didn't know half of these companies, but I knew that they were trading on a whole bunch of exchanges. So we need to see like, you know, what's their volatility, what's their total transactional volume, you know, uh, uh, what's their market cap, you know what I mean? So like, it's weird to hear like a more like a emotional slash business mindset towards it versus just like, just seeing charts and not knowing anything about the company right and then you like literally you don't really know anything much about this game but you could look at one of those charts and tell if that card is oversold or overbought right exactly like pull up a chart and and tyrell you analyze that chart just pull up a random card age whatever card you want all right so so you said what what about a random card all right, so go to all timer real quick. We're gonna let Tyrell analyze his chart on this card and see what, what's what's the, what's the all time high. All time high is the 24, 24 percent. And what's the what's the low right there? Uh, looks like two cents. Two cents. Yeah, two cents. And where's it at? Now? Uh, right at one cent. Two cent. Yeah, that's two cents. Let's go. Okay, to the third go card. Go to the card. Let me get a better card. Yeah. I had switched up to some. Crappy cards. Let's see quality. Quality. Look at this bad boy. Ah, oh, there's no no charge yet, but it's worth the fourteen hundred. That thing is. If you give me like a, a thousand or like a five hundred. Yeah, there you go. There's a good volume one. The vamp. <laughs> yeah, find the one with volume on it. You're clicking the ones without volume. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You can okay, sort by so, volume on this NFT marketplace. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is in my account. Hold up. I need to go to all of them. What? Oh, that yeah. Was, you. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Have, you were in your own account. That's why yeah. it was all wonky. There you go. Okay. So this one, what, $4.96? Okay, yeah, that's so a good see, one. Okay. This mm. one had a high of five sixty five. Mm -hmm. and a uh, low of two forty five. Oh, let's mm -hmm. go. So yeah, 245 and all the way up here. And it's just been grinding up. You know, people have been finding and the thing that I like about these NFTs. I see a nice little support at 420, maybe. Yeah, yeah. They actually they um in game, they actually have some type of use. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you don't just get a card, you build a deck, and then you can take that deck to enter competitions. And in those competitions, you can win ten, twenty thousand dollars. So mm. the card bill you to participate in something even larger. Okay, that makes sense. So it has like multiple purposes. Yeah, okay. you can sell them. You can mint them in the game. I don't know if you've seen the can game. Can I use two cards like at the same time? Like, is it one of those like where you can like they work hand in hand, or is it just because of your collection alone like makes it more powerful? Um, uh, your collection. Well, it's it's. It can go both ways. It can be your collection is just over like super powerful, or you can just have one. Let's say if you do have one thousand dollar card in your deck, well, all you mm -hmm. gotta do is wait, sell that thousand dollar card. You can buy I don't know how many cheaper cards. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some competitive decks that are like seven dollars and like in the top rankings, and they're they're winning enough NFT packs and God's token that it's way beyond seven. It's like a couple hundred dollars, maybe more a weekend. But I was I didn't want to oh, get into the whole the whole entirety of gods and chain right now. We'll we'll definitely talk about it on another show. I just wanted to bring it up for the technical analysis. There's the weekend mm -hmm. ranked. If you want to show real quick what the top prize pool is right there um on the player stash, just click that first guy. But well, one thing I'd like to add team, after I'd like to add something. You can keep going, Ben. 
Okay, so the one thing I was gonna say is that same NFT marketplace we were looking at, you saw that one card was like 20 cents. So sometimes I will buy like 50 of them or 100 of them like I do shares of stock. Mm, okay. Yep. So and if their price goes up, you get multiples. Right. Yeah. And then, right. And then if you want, I mean, you could sell all of them or sell most of them and then have some extra or, or whatever. But I'm just getting to the point like the technical analysis side, since that's what today's episode is about, it can be used across everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Like any type of thing that is a transfer of value, technical analysis will give you some type of roadmap to it go ahead rooster well one thing that i look at god as a long play like if i use the card i i got the cards that i like and uh the big thing that i would go is some cards have lock supply there's cards that the the supply is not capped on it yet but when you're looking at cards that have max supply and then it has a deflationary metric to it that's the biggest thing about gods that i like when you're looking at the cards is that the supply for the cards that are like Genesis cards, if you search just Genesis cards, the supply for these cards can't go up. So if the demand for them increases, if it's a good Genesis card, then then you're looking for it to continue going up in value as more people play the game. I think I seen a tweet where the amount of God's games played in 2022 increased by like 180 percent or something like that so it was right around there i saw it too yeah it was a huge increase in players and and volume in the immutable x marketplace everything this is what this is what um this is the level that i've been looking at i like to buy stuff cheap anyway guys is 24 cents and they're they're working on their mobile version they're only on um they're only on computer or PC right now, but they're working on their mobile version. I'm like, man, 24, 20, under 25 cents, I'm okay with, with taking a little bit down here because I'm looking at what the, the project is working on. I'm like, is this thing worth more than 25 cents? I think so. So I'm like, eh, I'm, I'm just well, going God's to... Well, God's Tokens has a max supply as well. So eventually exactly. there's going to be a max supply put in for God's and once the... Total. Also, guys is tied directly linked to IMX, which is up right now. IMX, I um I entered up here and I was like, I'm okay with getting this thing, you know, around 75 cents. And now it's re-entering this previous zone that I entered in. And you know, it's one of those things where I know the project, and uh I think we looked into this, Ben. We saw a lot of games being built on IMX. Um, oh, yeah, that's as a, fun. As a uh, ecosystem. Oh, IMX yeah. is huge right now. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing about the IMX token is part of you being a holder is getting a part of every transaction that happens on the IMX marketplace. So you get, you earn more IMX for holding IMX. Now, why I was also bringing up that technical analysis on the those charts for the NFTs is because when you trade more ten dollars or more, and that can be a ten dollar buy, ten dollar sell, whatever, in that um, token trove marketplace, you'll earn IMX tokens as well. Yep. <laughs> like God is just a money maker, but I only wanted to focus on the one uh, attribute of money making, the trading in the NFT market. But yeah, the, it is good you brought the token up because this is, brings me to another thing with technical analysis is not always everything you need like you like you can tell by looking at this chart you know that this is low but we know from the top of that chart where gods came out with their initial coin offering was at the beginning of 2022 which is the same time that the market started crashing which is also the same time the federal reserve stopped uh buy stop the quantitative easing and started raising interest rates so there's more to all the technical analysis this is why this is why i'm against all the different indicators so much because those candles are, are more important than those indicators but not only that understanding what is behind mm. those candles and, and that's what is making hear... people buy and sell is it hype is it rumors or is it the federal reserve 
squeezing people with high inflation and the government with high taxes and stuff like that. And people don't have a lot of money to be trading in the markets. You know, those type of things. That is where your patterns and your RSI and stuff can lie to you very quickly if the feds decide to change the course of the currency that you're measuring it all with those technical indicators. Because you're measuring all this stuff, these indicators in U.S. dollar. So if the U.S. dollar value is inflated or the dollar itself is inflated, well, now you're looking at an inflated numbers and charts and stuff, and you got to calculate that into your technical analysis. If you don't, you're looking at it a little blind. Yep. And that's where a lot of people got it wrong on 2008. They saw the technical analysis, and they did not think that uh, – everything would crash like that but the u.s dollar and the housing market and all that that was bigger influences on the real money because all these markets are controlled by the institutions that are working with the central banks that control the currencies so it, they, it's a lot of schemes and stuff like that and like you were saying from your mentor tyrell you said that one mentor always says uh he follows the banks yeah, he all yeah, junior junior is a different breed. Yeah, if you follow the central banks, like the World Econ Forum has had a bunch of central banks on and even had John Kerry on yesterday. But they tell you the Federal Reserve tells you where the, what they're gonna do, when they're gonna do it, you know. So you gotta be careful. The technical technical analysis is very strong, but on the other side, it can it can chop your head off if uh the sword is not being controlled by you mm -hmm. but he's able to call out trades like six weeks you know what i mean in advance like oh yeah like, i do that all the time too you know what i mean so you think about it, i'm like like I, I don't i'm not there yet i believe and, and i'm definitely working on it where like you know he's calling it out seeing like the yearly uh monthly opening or the yearly monthly close you know what i mean or you know being able to to hop in at these you know all-time lows or all-time highs like I, you know, I think that just takes a lot of patience and, and, and understanding the market. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why it takes so much patience is because these banks, these institutions and hedge funds, they can't do like we do and get in a trade. You know, they can't take a million dollars and buy a uh, stock. If they do that, it's going to shoot the price up all at once. Yeah. So what they do is buy little positions like we do, and they hide their big orders as little orders, a bunch of little mini orders. So like, so if he's following the banks, then he knows which way the momentum is going to go before it goes because the banks yeah. are going to be putting their money there. That's what I'm saying. Like, the technical analysis doesn't always show that because if it's in the U.S. dollar, then that's only one currency. There's tons of other currencies and value metrics like gold and silver and everything else. So like the this the whole crash this 2022 crash you can ask H I was calling it for the longest that we were going to have a nasty crash I was like as soon as the Fed starts saying that they're going to raise interest rates we're going to crash <laughs> like how how long did I say that for the last two years yeah, <laughs> all my live wow. streams and everything <laughs> it, but it wasn't like I'm not call like it's, this is probably the same thing your your mentor would say I I'm not calling these things I'm just repeating the message from and the we, actual people in charge don't shoot the messenger i didn't really say anything magical i just they just told me so i just said it to everybody else that's it <laughs> and this is the thing ben like i want to piggyback over that when you talk about like the the british countries or or um of that nature because he trades you know gu heavy i don't know why like what's you know why is he like trading gu so heavy um if you had a perspective on like on that as well like you know bring it full circle GU the what is that the British pound? Yep. Um, I'm not sure exactly why he would be trading the British pound. My first thought is maybe it's volatile because the euro is really the overlooming currency over the British pound since the euro came out. Um, but you know there is a he may be looking at it as. The U.S. dollar is going down. The euro is definitely in trouble. And if the European nations decide to split off and break the uh, whole euro pact or whatever it is, 
then the euro would crash and that would leave Great Britain's British pound to, you know, maybe rise back to um, a higher currency standing in the world of currencies. That may be what his thoughts is. I don't know. That's just the only thing I can think of for dash currencies looks pretty good now that I'm looking at it. You got it up on the chart? I don't have it up. Can you pull it up, H? I've not looked at that specific currency. Like, sniping in pound, man. I'm like, jeez. Like, like, I, like, you know, like, just watching the last couple of years of just, you know what I mean, seeing him in the market, he's such a patient person. He make it seem like, like, this is just obvious, you know what I mean? And so I don't know, it's like, you know, expanding your mind to realize, like, you know, the patience of the market, but, like, it's just how he gets to just see the market on a bigger perspective is crazy. This, yeah, uh, has he been trading the British pound for, that's the British pound versus the U.S. dollar, yeah. Um, but I think um, if you go to, get off the futures, go to uh, all, you should be able to find the British pound without the, yeah, I guess that one will work, that's fine. It's still against the U.S. dollar. That's fine. Yeah, so that's you see, yeah. yeah, so you can see the British pound has been performing against good against the U.S. dollar this last. I don't let's see. What are you on a month? The last I couple of months. Bottom. Oh yeah, you know all I look at is the month on this. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I was trying to see. Yeah, I was just making sure those candles where it just bounced at. But it actually, if you looked at all the currencies, the U.S. dollar has been crashing. Um, the UDX, what is it? The UDXY? Are you? What is that? I have. I don't even have a trading view up in front of me. I think it's UDXY. The dollar index, it crashed from about 110 in the past two weeks to um, 100, down to well, close to 100. And when mm-hmm. that happened, the digital yuan went up, the Brazilian real went up. Those, are the, you know, all the BRICS nation countries currencies went up, and it looks like probably everything did. It looks like because the U.S. dollar decreased in purchasing power, it means that the British pound is buying more um, at this current time than it was before. Mm-hmm. He's uh, bullish on everything. everything. That's what I'm saying. Like, if he's with the banks, but he's bullish on everything, like, that's just, that's, that's been really what's been messing me up lately. You know what I mean? Like, he's bullish like, on everything? Huh? What do you, he, he's bullish on everything? What do you mean by that? Not, like, not bullish on everything, but he's just been really buying the breakouts of, like, the Great British Pound, you know, of, you know, US 30, of, like, the NASDAQ, stuff like that. And he's just seeing, like, the the um, the um breakouts within the rest of this year. You know what I mean? Like, we all call, like, you know, the dollar's about to recover a little bit, but, like, he just been really long-term saying that, you know, this is going to be a, a really a bullish move, a really heavy bullish move. Well, like adding to the bull board. case... I would say that I think there's a headwind building that nobody can that not like the common eye can't see. I don't think there's so much innovation. I think that this temporary run that we had, I think this sell off, there's just so much opportunity out there that the real like big time investors are really narrowing down okay which company do we want to put money in for a long-term run so i i think that the pullback was definitely needed in the markets the the rate hikes added in with that but i you know this there's just something that feels strange about this little move that we're having right now and there's a lot of momentum behind it right i agree it's just very confusing. And and when I watch like Bloomberg and I like try to see, you know, what perspective they have, it's like they, they it's something where they give the same answers we give. Like, you know, it's this is diff- there's something different about this market this year that no one can really like understand, but we, we know it's oh, either I, I exactly what it is. It's the Fed's stop printing money and the, and the taxes are higher. The, everybody's the, the rooster is right about what he said. The company, the uh, investors are looking for specific buying opportunities, but they're looking for the companies that are going to survive this exactly. bad economic downturn. Exactly. We're in. They got to figure out and have that confirmation. So they, you know, I think enough losses on everybody, basically. What's that? I said they're hunting stop losses on everybody. Well, basically, the well, they do that anyway. Control. Man, I know this thing is a hunting stop loss. They're always hunting your stop loss. That's what you're no saying. Such thing. No such yeah. thing. You, you don't yeah, think the shorters so. are down there? No. You don't think market makers drop 
will drop a price to fill shorts. They got to. If they run out of shares, they're either going to go below the price to grab the lower shares, or they're going to go higher. But I'm more than likely, they're going to go lower. Unregulated brokers. My, my broker be knowing, bro. You, like you remember, you remember what we were talking about earlier about the stop loss. If your stop loss is not in a good position, it'll get hit. Yeah. You remember that? Think about yeah. the times that you put a stop loss in, and it just—it's almost like the buyers. Or, or if you were going short or going long, let's just use long, for example. Mm-hmm. It's almost like the buyers protect your position. It just will not come down and hit your position, and then it just takes off from there. Mm-hmm. If they could possibly stop hunt loss, and this is another thing about volume and liquidity. Um, it is very hard for them to stop loss hunt when there's a lot of liquidity, when there's a lot of eyes and people in there. If right. Something that that I I could I could kind of bend the rule and say there's some stop loss hunting if it is low liquidity. If somebody just throws a million in there and it jumps down, you know, a whole lot and it forms a, a big wick, okay, great. But we don't trade those kind of stocks. I don't I don't touch a stock that has low low liquidity. If I can't get in and out, I feel unsafe. I'm not touching. It. Right. We're so, talking about cryptos and everything now. Yeah, I'm like, talking remember, about everything. You remember. Hold on, you remember when uh um oh, I just forgot his name, it's right on the tip of my tongue. He was what was his name? Or Orlando. Yeah. You remember when he was in Binance and Bitcoin and Binance Exchange dropped it all the way down to zero and hit a stop loss when Bitcoin was at fifty something thousand, he had a stop mm-hmm. loss down at twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. You don't think that was Binance Exchange's uh their market makers for the exchange was hunting wasn't hunting stop losses? They hit every stop loss on the way down for that one. That wasn't stop loss hunt though. That was just a failure of the company. That was that was more that was that was too big. A stop loss is is when they come down, and or let's say that I wouldn't even call it stop loss hunt. I would just call it a dip. A yeah, dip the slip is right. Get filled for a move into the next direction, or um, get filled for consolidation. Either way it goes. It's just to me, it's not a stop. It's it's not a stop loss hunt. And for 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 that to happen, like I said, it's got to be low liquidity. It's got to be somebody with a lot of money to bounce down like that and then bounce right back up. Oh, you know how okay. Big so, those weeks so are? you're. I got you. So you're not saying that it doesn't happen. You're saying as far as like what you're trading, you you stay away from the stuff where that happens because of what you stay in the things that where it doesn't happen. Basically, I think I said that twice. I don't know. Yes, if you. It, I feel like if you're getting stopped, if you're getting caught in something like that, you're not trading the right thing because there's not enough people there to protect your position. If you enter long, that means you expect people to come in above that entry to continue that price action above your entry and higher. If you let's say if you buy the tip top of something, you top tick something, and then all of a sudden it dives on you. You didn't get stop loss hunted. You just had a bad entry. You bought the no, tip no, top. I don't. No, I know what you mean, but what I mean is like when it goes like maybe a pip or two or a couple pips, like past your entry and then buses to the back to the upside. See what I'm saying? Where it just literally like kind of does like a quick, like not like a quick t- a test, a retest basically. You know what I mean? And so like, you know, you you do your, like, what if you do your, uh, your stop loss to break even and then it comes back down, tests your your uh entry again and then starts busting back up see what i'm saying i feel like that's like a in, stop loss in uh, my huh. head in my head that was a bad entry on my part I, mm. I, I, I just take accountability on that i'm like okay if i was in with the big boys if i was in with the the people with the money that wouldn't have happened but that to to me i look at that as a a, a re-entry see what i'm saying it's been plenty of times that happened and i just got into another re- a re-entry and even yeah, though i knew you can do that though because you mm-hmm. you have the same bias but if it comes and stops you out it's okay it's like oh, no, no, no. Just, yeah because you can get a better position with that wick down you can get better position exactly. with that position down exactly. i'm halfway i'm halfway sold h on this i'm halfway sold no, I, 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 I get what oh, you're but, saying well now. i'll i, I kind of agree with with h because i think the reason why a stock goes down is because more people sold than bought. The reason why it goes up is because more people bought than sold. So mm-hmm. 
that's just supply and demand. And at that moment in time, more people wanted to sell. And then if you got, if it wicks down to that point, then, you know, more people wanted to buy at that point. That's why the price goes up. That's what I, that's what I think at least. Mm -hmm. And I try to put my stop losses in where I, where I think more people are going to want to sell than buy. And if I get triggered and it wicks me, you know, more than likely I'm already on another chart. I'm uh, right. not even watching it because I trust that I put the stop in where I think that more people are going to want to sell than buy. So we're talking about day trading. Do you guys have stop losses in on your long-term positions? I put a stop loss in on Baba today and it didn't get filled at 119.10. <laughs> Now, I've the only, only reason wait, 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 that I don't... Not today, not today. You've had Baba for a long time. Have you had a stop loss on Baba this whole time? No, today was the first time I put a stop loss in on Baba because I, I was looking for 120.79 gap, and it failed to break over 120 twice. So I said, okay, uh, the shares that I want to cut, we're still going to, we're still long Baba. I mean, it, it doesn't go against our rules by any means, but we do got to cut down the position a little bit. So the way I do that is, okay, I wanted to cut shares today at market end. Uh, let's put a stop loss below this because I think more people are going to want to sell. I want to at least make sure that I get a sell order up at this price. And we, it didn't get filled, so I uh, didn't, didn't end up selling any of it today. Exactly, because there was protection for your position. It got damn close. It was thirteen cents off. Hey, that, that's that's the whole point. It got close, but that's guess what? Was is, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So even the long term investing age is saying your position should still have buyers if mm -hmm. you're in it long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a nice simple way to put it. I like think simple, and that sounds really good. I like that. Just think about it. If if something, if you get into something as a loan, you see value before the people that are getting in behind you see value. Right. So there should be people coming in rapidly, seeing the value after you see it. That's the whole. That's how we profit as traders is getting in before the move. Right. You know. No, that's true. That's true. Like you got to see the setup before it happens and kind of walk into your entry. Yep. Well, we're winding down uh, time on the show here. Is there any trades that anybody wants to talk about? The H and me talk, talk, talked about some trades we took this week. I don't know, Rooster, we might need another 10 hours for the trades you've probably taken this week. <laughs> I would say my biggest watch is Oil is the biggest watch. Oh, yeah. Uh, watch for the break at 82 on oil. And, you know, some of these big cappers are really starting to get some headwind. Google, uh, keep your eyes on Google, Amazon, rig, rig over six. Watch out for the entry. You're, you miss the entry. So this is a day trade if you're choosing to get in now. But keep an eye on that seven, 670 gap. Oil play, INDO. We had entries off six flat today. Yep. And that was up in the position. Look uh, at all this buying pressure, though, on oil. These three bar, all this little, this buy up. These are the wicks down that we were talking about. Somebody is keeping. Oh, you're this on thing a, you're on a month chart right there. Zoom out. Yeah, Zoom out real yeah, quick. Yeah, I don't look at anything lower than a month on these types of plays. If I'm swing trading, I look at monthly charts. Zoom Ain't out of the chart day. for me. Zoom, not zoom in. Zoom out. Oh, out. Yeah. Keep going a little bit further. It's almost there. Yeah, it keeps zooming out further. Now you can uh, scroll the wheel it up. Go the other way. Scroll wheel it upward. Yep. You see this big W pattern right there? Where's that neckline at? There's not, not down that one. Yep. There's that neckline at 70. We're in a trading range between 70 and 80 right now. Now zoom over go over to the right so we can see the current price look what we're looking into right now that is your back test of the neckline trade right there now put a fib tool from the top of the move down to the uh bottom of I the left bottom i don't know if i have the fib tool uh ready to go let's see which one is it that, that one right there the top fib channel top top one. Oh, fib retracement fib retracement now from the top of your left leg which should be around that 130. Yep, not right there. Go left to the left leg. That's the right leg. Not not that one. The top before that. 
Yep, go from right around there somewhere. Now go to the bottom of that first move down. Yeah, up a little bit, that first move. Now you can go to the, the candle body. Yep, right there. I'm staying true to these levels. We're going to respect the top of the right leg, which is around that 130s. We're going to respect 168, and we're looking for a full extension up to 385. That's my call. You can put a stop loss in below the wicks if you feel like it's getting getting dicey. 70, you don't want it to get under 70, but it's got good support over there. But that's your long-term look right there of what I'd look for a potential extension on oil. I would also keep up with whatever news. I use TOS for my news, so <clears throat> let's see. President Biden says U.S. debt defaults would be unprecedented calamity, you know, I kind of kind of keep an eye on the news. A lot of Democratic what, what, lawmaker news. What do you What do you use for news? Uh, TOS uh, Thinkorswim's uh, application. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I just use this for charting. Use it for scanners and news. BGT. Yeah. You got any news for me on that one? BD we what? It. BKKT, we held this to the weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a crypto. That's a crypto yeah, play. A crypto stock, yeah. We held this over the weekend. Ugh. So this You're one saying we, over... we didn't do nothing. Don't you say I don't oh, me and your shenanigans. Me, me I meant. I hold you and your, the weekend. you and your brother and your dog. <laughs> yeah. This one uh, came up and, and tested a... Uh, uh, Let's see. It was once up at seven dollars, but yet it yet definitely got a Bitcoin push here. This is a sentimental play, just like Ben we got in tomorrow. This is a sentimental um, play on Bitcoin. Yeah, I couldn't remember this ticker. I was trying to remember it all damn week last week what the name of this ticker was because I remember trading it last year when we had the we had a run up on it. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I'm glad you brought it up now. I'm put it back on my watch list because I like the ones the the crypto plays I'm watching in the stock market are Mara because it's digital or it's Bitcoin mining, but BTCS that's probably one of the most interesting plays to me. One because I we have interviews with Charles Allen, the CEO, and we're going to have him on again here real soon. We're going to try to bring him to this show, uh, but. They are a node validator, and they are releasing their stakes stake seeker, or they just released it, which is a staking platform that is non-custodial. So you're able to stake your tokens and earn staking rewards without actually them leaving your wallet, and it's a full-on dashboard, and BTCS is li listed on the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm, that's right here. They were the first to pay out a vivid, uh, Bitcoin dividend. They gave everybody, share, all the shareholders, an option to receive their Ooh. dividend. Yep. And right now they're at a dollar fifty-four cents. So, like I said, if I'm gonna go long term, I like getting in cheap. But mm -hmm. I like to have a project backing it. I want to know that it's going, it can, it can do something for people. I don't like the hype play for a long-term play. No, I don't like That's that, why I'm so confident in the stop loss because I'm like, I'm in a good position. Once I'm in the profit, I'm holding this thing until my hair goes gray. So we got oil. Sounds like Google and right there. I'll go buy some Google. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been preaching that, that 92 entry. You like the high prices ones, though. H doesn't. He he's like yeah, me. We don't like the hundred dollars. That's way different from a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> as long as somebody buys it higher. But yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it's the amount of shares per liquidity is the way I look at it. Like yeah. with you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to ask you too. Like, how do you go? Like, so you don't you you do only penny stocks? Do you do some blue uh, uh, blue chip stocks? Like, what what interests you in yeah. getting into a certain um, pair? Uh, are you asking like, me or how? Uh, um, Roos. Me? Uh, yeah. I would say that I hold into regard the fundamentals of companies. I try to look into as much as I can about a company if it's a long term play for me. Now, if it's like a swing trade. The better that I feel the fundamentals of the company are, the more comfortable I feel in holding it for a swing trade. The less, right. the less f fundamentally sound the company is, that's when it starts turning more into a day trade. That's why Kazim, 
you know, to me, it, I, is the company profitable? I want to be uh, with profitable companies. A good uh, ETF that, that I like to trade off of is the COWS, C-O-W-Z. It's the uh, 100 uh, most free cash flow equities in the United States. So basing on free cash flow, that's a company's bottom line profit. So most of this watch list that you see over here, a lot of them are names in the cows. It just so fig happens that the cows is heavily invested in the oil. Oil, they have great margins, great profit percent or profit mm -hmm. margins, and the oil chart setting up. It makes sense that I would like a lot of these tickers in the cows. So man, this uh, thing looks just like the spy. It definitely does. And the year to date, it outperformed the spy double. It was only down 10% year to date in 2022. So, I mean, yeah, it looks just like the spy. I bet you, you hold this for 10 years, you got a pretty decent return on average. Yeah. Talking yeah. crazy now. Yeah, you guys are very, very smart, man. You you think you think uh, so, man? You're really bullish on the U.S. You think the that's gonna that's gonna be good in 10 more years? I think the cows will be the... good. <laughs> I hope the cows are good. I hope they're good in 10 years, man. We need milk. We're, milk's already expensive because of the inflation. But, I mean, the then, th this goes to more of my strategy. One of the big things that I made sure I was comfortable with before I started taking more swing trades, more day trades, is my account's got to have a foundation. VT, Vanguard Total World Index Fund, north of 9,000 different holdings. I hold the entire world's economy in VT and VXUS, internationally 90% holdings. Or the international holdings of VXUS is 90% international plays with 7,800 different holdings. With those two ETFs, that is building my foundation. I hold the entire world's economy because when I retire 40 years from now, I think all the innovation, all the bright minds of this world are going to create naturally a better flowing economy for the world 40 years from now so that's my foundation now everything else you go in the cows yeah technicals this this and that yeah i can hold this but i keep everything at a minimal i'm comfortable with my foundation i want to have a piece of every pie out there i have multiple holdings in crypto i have multiple holdings in nfts play to earn games i want to have my hands in every piece of the because i think that People aren't looking at the, at the picture right. Crypto is going to take the game, the, the world by storm, and people aren't going to know how to react to it. That's the phase that we're in. They do not know how to react to crypto. And once all this added money or add like ways that you can make money and how you can like uh, be more efficient in today's world than you could 10, 20 years from now, then it, it's it's ridiculous what you're able to do. I'm work I'm self-employed, working like eight or nine different jobs. That is the innovation of today's world. You don't need to work at eight to an eight to five now to to be able to to live your life. There's so many. There's so much opportunity out there, and that's why, to me, having a foundation is the most important thing. And I like my entries on VT and VXUS, and I will gladly hold those even if they they are going down. Like the, that's that's my thoughts. He's gonna be adding if they go down. <laughs> when the time's right, but I mean. Uh, I want my hands in every piece of the pie I can possibly get, man. Do you guys got a number, like a like a retirement number, or is it just more of like when you just give up the game? What do you mean a retirement number? Like just like once I make it this amount of money, I'm retired. Cause nah, like I hear we're, we're focused on the the multiple sources of income, so we don't have to worry about a, a specific number. We want we want to be like a like we want to have all these streams coming into our ocean we got a big ocean a lot of people out here playing but we want to take our piece without even having to participate basically a lot of our a lot of and i don't know about being in a rooster but a lot of my income is passive so yes i actively trade yes i can make you know 500 600 real quick but what am i doing with that money after i have it am i continuing to trade with it no i'm going and breaking that money down putting it here there and everywhere as passive income so my losses that let's say if I do take a loss in the market, like I lost 60 bucks today. Well, I already know by end of day, all of my passive income streams have made that back without, I can just go and check them. And I, I can guarantee you $60 has been made today in passive income. Passive incomes. That's all I preach. I love it. I would say adding oh. off the, off of what house said, 
I I go off of revenue streams. I thought the when how mentioned revenue different revenue streams that hits it right on the money for me because I'm looking three years back. I had two or three different ways of of income. Now I in triple digits easily in the triple digits in my ways of of income. And I want to build that every single year. So I'm not really focused on retirement, like that retirement stage. I'm focused on the next year. How many more revenue streams am I going to have? What's my like compounding that. growth rate on my revenue streams? If I go I like from six that. to 20, then next year, maybe I'm at 40. Okay, that's 100% growth. As you get bigger, it's harder to grow that faster. So yeah, you're going to have to work harder for it. But let's say that next year you, you're up to 60. Well, that's still 50% growth. I, you're still growing, but that growth is slowing. So it's it's a, especially in these early years, it's it's really big to get solidified your different revenue streams, and then who knows the next opportunity uh, uh, presents itself. And one, you know, sometimes you need capital to be able to f have revenue streams, and uh, that's why it's able to continue compounding year in and year out. So I focus on the growth rates and different revenue streams that I have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Growth rate and revenue streams. I love it. Oh, well guys, said, both of you. Well I, said. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Uh, appreciate yeah, y'all. Um, attention. Definitely, definitely dropping all the the nuggets and wisdom, and us just bouncing off of each other and becoming sharper blades. But um, definitely, I will definitely love to see what the next show is going to hold. But I got to get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, Bye, my man. dog needs some, yeah, needs sure. some Appreciate attention. You. No problem. All right, y'all have a good one. Peace, boys. That's you guys later. H.H. Trader, L.A. Dow Security Dev, and Rooster, our asset management research team dev, both of those guys talking all of their crazy technical analysis and That's trading right. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you haven't yet, go check. Oh, I know, I know. We're going to have more shows. I was about to plug you guys. Well, we'll pause. That was weird. You guys, uh, yeah, their channels, that's what you need to check out. That's where I was going. The uh, Shout out to your channel, Reliable Rudy. Yeah, the links are in the description. You, you come to the channel, if you... I, I, you can learn a thing or two. I guarantee it. If you if you were interested in that, I'll break it down more more in depth in the into entries, exits. I mean, that was just going off of just the. Bro, I appreciate this, and this is such a transparent thing for me because, like I said, I deal with a lot of like fake people. You know, coming, you know, my me learning from IML like really didn't teach me a lot. It was when I kind of got away from all of that and of the telegram groups and all of that this is where i really learned my own trading strategy but now that i'm very sounded in the values that i have it's going to make it a lot easier for me to come back into certain communities and learn better because i know the mistakes i have so I, like i appreciate the invite oh yeah and um h if you're still here can you or oh, i'll, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll see I don't say yeah. the Discord. I'm on the Framework Fortune Discord, so I can join and trade with you guys in the morning and stuff or whatever. Oh, yeah, we, man, the we, it's all market talk in the Discord. You you want some some nice you want some uh good analysis and things because we the thing is we don't believe in just taking trades just to be taking trades. You know what I'm saying? Like every trade extent. should have your complete belief behind it that this yeah, right exactly. here is I'm gonna be exactly. right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make and that's where your confidence gets built. If you're constantly shattering your confidence by just taking crazy entries, of course you're, yeah. you're not gonna have any. You're gonna be on yeah. entries. So another thing, I wouldn't be scared. I wouldn't be scared to take a losing trade either. Like, don't let that affect your next trade. Like, oh, that's okay. live every bet as a square one, zero zero ball game at half, or what? Whatever pep talk you need to give yourself to say, hey, zone in on this next one. Evaluate Everybody. the last one, the positives, negatives, move forward. And and that's the that's the great thing about the Discord with the sharing. Uh we we can do all I gotta go. the, 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 the analysis with the Discord is for everybody. So we literally have combined our trade analysis with forex traders, stock market, whoever you are, mm -hmm. you can come there and kind of show show what you know. And of mm -hmm. course, Discord, you can you can open up the video chat yourself and open up the chat room in the Discord and be like, hey, come join me in the Discord. This is what I'm looking at, blah, blah, blah. And people come in and actually visit with you, give their 
a perspective on what you're doing, what your trade's looking like, and everything. It's it's just a great place. Yeah, HH, before you go, man, what should what you say with your daily goal? Um, daily goal for profit? Yes. Man, if I I'm looking at two to three hundred dollars because I already okay. know um on the back end i'm making money i i work i work in it i'm uh i do cybersecurity, so i know i'm gonna make money it's just putting a cherry on top i know yeah, the bills yeah. paid i just i'm i'm okay with the extra 300 dollars, 400 dollars in a day you know what i'm saying appreciate it yeah for sure i just want to know like moving forward because i want to i just want to stay disciplined i need the dis this the consistency and discipline so mm -hmm. if, if it's not 500 then 200 300 is still good you know what mm -hmm. i mean like hey. I said, just write down the expenses that you have and see mm -hmm. how many of your trades are covering any of those expenses. And you can say, okay, well, maybe maybe you're just paying your phone bill. Maybe you just make $100, but that's a mm -hmm. phone bill paid. You know what I'm saying? Right. Maybe when you size up, it's like, okay, well, now I can pay my insurance, which is like whatever ins my insurance is it's crazy high, 800, 800, but I pay it in full. Um, and I'm like, okay, if I can pay... $800 with two days of trading, I could pay six months in advance with two days of trading. That's great. That's something that doesn't have to come out of my regular working pay. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Um, appreciate that. But yeah, also the framework fortune discord is connected to the DLA Dow discord. So you can get to the Dow discord as well. As much as we are a bunch of traders, we do have everything going on there with the play to earn gaming. H is, uh, he's hes the one who helped me yesterday when my Discord account got hacked and made sure everything was okay. Yeah. Everything is okay. <laughs> drop, the, drop the link in my inbox. Um, and and Because you know how sometimes like the chat doesn't allow oh, you yeah, to yeah, click on it. Yeah, H, if, if you got them to somebody, send them all the links and stuff. To Appreciate catch up it. to this, and then uh, we have the Dow, the Daily Dow Archer community. Maybe, I don't know, maybe H and Rooster might want to hop in, make a little framework fortune community on Archer. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. I don't know. It's up to you guys. So y'all can keep out on the Discord however you want to do it. But this has been quite an episode oh, for the wow. third episode. That was What's crazy. that? I had dropped Trader Sync. I meant to copy this uh, Discord link into the chat. Oh, before we go, let's okay, actually do it now. Okay, cool. If he doesn't get it, then I'll send it to him in the DMs. But before we go, before I do this lovely outro with my smooth radio voice, <laughs> let's do a couple of Dow updates. So. We're going to be launching proposals nonstop over the next week. The first one being the task team proposal. So for DLA Dow, we are going to vote on a task team to be taken, uh, be put into the protocols of our Dow, and that task team will allow for community members to earn DLA Dow tokens for doing various tasks, like maybe helping create a species for the Forgotten Corners game uh, with Fresh, or if HH has some type of little security thing he needs to help with, or anything like that, all types of different things, Discord moderation, people will be able to get more involved with the DAO and actually earn some DAO tokens, which does have governance rights, so you're able to vote on all these proposals in the future of the DAO moving forward. There's also going to be a ton more. We're also got the uh, Tyrell and Gary to let's see what fresh. What are we going to do for this weekend event? Are we going to do it tomorrow or Sunday? H, what, what day is best um, for you? Tomorrow is better for me because Sunday I'm busy. Okay. How about you, H? I will have to update you because you know Saturdays get kind of crazy. Oh, all right, all right, all right. So we'll announce it in the morning early what the day is going to be for this weekend's event for the DLA Dow show because we're going to do some type of gaming event, but we do know Tyrell and Gary are supposed to face off in old school Mortal Kombat for Forgotten Corners NFT rare of their choice. And then we're probably going to play some other games and just have a, a relaxed show on this for this weekend. Everybody, uh, maybe we'll play some gods, maybe play some Mario, 
and maybe we'll have some rewards for some of those games. Maybe we'll do some giveaways, what not. Any last words from anybody left here on the panel before we go? And I do. I just want to say, man, you know, Ben, I appreciate the space, bro. Like, you know, you, you've been creating just every single time I come back, I get more and more hype, you know, learning from everybody that's coming into the space. So it makes me feel more comfortable to know that there's other people that's like-minded like me, um, investing, trading, you know, getting to know each other. Um, this is actually growing the culture of Andre. Yes, and we are glad to have you and anybody else come and join us. We want to have a place where people can talk about all this stuff, debate about it, not get silenced, not get thrown off the stage, and it all stayed nice and civil. Debate, discussion, all that is the only way to move forward as the human species, because without that communication, we'll be running around like crazy zombies. Even dirty stinky mushrooms have organization and communication us as humans should be able to do this <laughs> right what, what right. go ahead h just let you pop in oh i was about to say i'm about to bug out man yeah yeah we're about to we're about to end the show right now appreciate you joining appreciate everybody joining fresh you got any last words for them your man a short word thank, thank, thank everybody for coming um um this is clearly not my expertise, but it's great to learn. Awesome. Awesome. And Fresh, you got a lot of different spaces you're in right now on Twitter and stuff like that. The, if you want to shout out your, your friends from there to teach them Turtle Boys and all of them, they're out there trying to do some work for the, what did they did a beach cleanup or something like that for the NFT project? Yeah. They're uh, doing a beach cleanup um, funded by the casino project and uh, the Zillionaire Goat Club. They're, they're a clothing line company backed by an NFT project. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, we got a we got a lot of friends out here too of the DLA DAO and of the developers, and we're going to be bringing some guests, more guests to the show. We're going to have some. Uh, Pretty exciting, exciting guests in the future, but that's it for tonight's episode. I hope you guys have had a great drive home if you're driving through that 5 o'clock traffic. If you're just now waking up somewhere else around the world, I hope you're driving safe to work. If you haven't yet, go check out dladow.org, forgottencorners.io, and frameworkfortune.com to find all of the communities and everything we've been talking about here today. And you'll be able to find every developer's link. You need something done for graphics wise, something like that. Fresh Builder's got you if he feels like doing it for you. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Have a great rest of your night. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll be back soon with another episode. Until next time. That's all, folks.